Thank you for being here today. I'm Drew Hansen. I chair the Washington House of Representatives Higher Education Committee. We're here today to support House Bill 1488 and its companion in the Senate that will protect financial aid for some of our undocumented students. As many of you know, the Trump administration has announced the end of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, known as DACA. If that happens, we have a lot of our students in this state who are at risk of losing their eligibility for financial aid and college affordability benefits. We don't want that to happen. We want all of our students, documented or undocumented, to have a chance to stay in school, get a degree, go get a decent job to provide for their families. So we will have very brief remarks from legislators, and you can tell how brief they are because mine are already done. Uh, and then we will hear from a couple of students, current or former, and we'll hear from the Technology Association for their view on this bill. So we'll start out with, uh, we'll start with my colleague from the Senate, Senator David Frock. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Hansen. My name is uh, Senator David Frock from the 46th District and very involved in higher ed issues for many years. Uh, we will be hearing tomorrow a companion bill, uh, very similar, not exactly the same, but pretty close to the bill that Representative Hansen mentioned. We have been trying to change this law and expand the DREAM Act from 2013 to all forms of financial aid uh, since 2013. And this will be the first time, thanks to our new chairman and the new majority in the state Senate, that we are actually going to have a hearing and have a chance and opportunity to move this legislation forward. And I just want to say uh, very simply, with all of the young people I've met over the years who have been DREAMers and have uh, uh, been DACA recipients now, um, this is absolutely the right thing to do. It's the moral thing to do. In Washington, in this Washington, whatever they're doing in the other Washington, we don't leave anybody behind. We bring everybody together. We make sure that everybody who's contributing in our society has an opportunity to advance themselves. Whether you are, were brought here as a young child, uh, whatever your status, that is the opportunity that we afford you here, you here in Washington. That's what this bill is all about. And I could not be more thrilled to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have the new chair of the Senate Higher Education Committee. Please welcome Senator Chair Kevin Ranker. Thank you, Drew. Uh, I am the chair of the Senate Higher Education and Workforce Development Committee. I'm uh, Kevin Ranker, and I want to say that this bill is an absolute top priority for us to move. In Washington State, we will not only protect, but we will make sure every single member of every single community has access and also has affordability when they, have, when they want to go to college. So we will stop at nothing to move these bills. They are an absolute top priority. Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. in my hearing, I will be hearing DACA. I will also be hearing the Student Loan Bill of Rights, and I will also be hearing a bill to make all college free for anyone under the medium income in Washington State, because that access and that affordability is critical for everybody, not just in this room, not just in this state, but this country. And that's why Washington State must lead the nation in showing what it means to be an American and to be a member of our communities and to treat each other with love and respect and make sure that everybody Everybody has an opportunity to better themselves. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, so now we will hear from some of our students. We're going to start with Daniela, please. Okay, hi. Um, my name is Daniela Murguia, and I am undocumented and did not benefit from DACA. I am a transfer student from Edmonds Community College, and I'm currently a student at the University of Washington Bothell and I could be graduating in, spring, in the spring of 2019, all if I'm able to pay for the rest of my college years. Taking away the DACA eligibility for this scholarship would help my family and I in monumental ways. Not only would it further access state aid and help me finally finish my college degree, but also it would help my younger sister, who is a sophomore in high school. My younger sister signed the pledge for college-bound scholarship, however, she cannot access that aid for the same reason, for her status as undocumented and not having DACA. It upsets me that my sister could not be able to pursue the path that my older sister and I have set out for her. My older sister has been the one that has had the toughest experience with aid for college, where she couldn't access money for several years, to the point of her almost dropping out of the University of Washington, Seattle, and it really affected our family down to the core. This is the reality of many undocumented students who aspire to attend higher education and are part of our communities who are actively contributing to our communities one way or the other in so many multiple ways. 
we all deserve accessibility to education. And we also must center the voices of undocumented students in spaces like these when we are being the ones who are actually being directly affected through these. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, a former student of ours who has testified on this bill for the past two years. This will be her third session testifying on this bill and, Lord willing, her last session testifying on this bill because it will be a law. Please welcome Graciela. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Graciela Nunez and I'm a DACA recipient and also a recent graduate from the University of Washington. I am privileged here to represent undocumented scholars from the College Success Foundation, a champion of educational equity. As well as being a DACA recipient, I want to remind everyone that I have an expiration date. As an American, it's difficult to think of my presence as a temporary and scrutinized commodity. I am grateful to be working with people, especially leaders like Representative Hansen, uh, Senator David Frocht, and Senator Ranker. However, I do want to urge everyone in this room that the battle does not end here. It extends outside the legislature and it extends into our country to echo the words from the elected officials. But nonetheless, I am energized and ready to fight for a permanent legislative solution that does not have an expiration date and is not attached to another unstable administration. This is a step in the right direction and commits to our shared values as Americans. The next step is protecting the 800,000 recipients, DACA recipients, and the 11 million undocumented immigrants and their families. The fight continues here, and I'm here to advocate tirelessly alongside the College Success Foundation, the Washington State Labor Council, AFL-CIO, for an opportunity to uphold our national values and keep our promises regardless of political party. We stand united and we will bend the arc of the moral justice, uh, the moral universe to bend towards us and give us justice. Thank you. Thank you. And last speaker before we'll be pleased to take questions is Michael Schutzler from the Washington Technology Industry Association. Michael. Good afternoon. I feel a little intimidated coming after Graciela. Um, so my name is Michael Schutzler. I'm the CEO of the Washington Tech Industry Association. We're a cooperative of almost 1,000 tech companies in the state of Washington. And our principal guiding objective is to help Washington residents get jobs in the tech industry. Um, the tech industry in our state and across the country stands in solidarity with the dreamers. These are young people, um, like the folks that you've just seen, who are brought to our country by their parents. Most have lived here for over a dozen years. Dreamers want to serve this country because it's the only home they've ever known. Young immigrants are essential as a part of our country's future. They're strong students, and you just saw, you just witnessed that, and they're leaders in our communities. Most of you probably don't know this, but 70% of the venture capital-backed tech companies in our country were formed by immigrants. Immigrants in our industry create jobs for Americans, so we should do all we can to help them succeed. Our state is creating jobs 10 times faster than the state produces talent for those industries. The last thing that we need is having people drop out of college because they can't afford it anymore. When students like Dreamers and the T or U visas that are applied in this particular bill uh, lose financial aid, it means that we're losing local talent to work for companies like Microsoft and Amazon and Zillow, Expedia, Avalara, but also companies like Starbucks and REI and Nordstrom's are hiring even more techies than most of the tech companies are in our state. We must keep our good students in college. We must keep them working hard and getting degrees so that they can get the high paying jobs that the tech industry is creating to support not only their families, but the communities in which they live. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So uh, in some world record, we are eight minutes from the beginning of this press conference. Uh, we are about ready for questions. Let me just say one thing in closing before we take questions, which I should have mentioned. We are hearing this bill, 1488, at 1.30 here in this room, so if you're interested Please stick around. The details get complicated and technical, but I mean, the bottom line is this federal immigration policy is zany and nutty and incomprehensible. And it's in Washington state, 
we typically make our own decisions about how students are going to be able to go to college, be eligible for financial aid. And it's about time for us to not be beholden to whatever comes out of Washington, D.C. for our students and protecting our students and their lives and their families and the jobs they're going to get to provide for their families. So that's why we're here. Thank you for being here. Be happy to take questions from anyone who cares to. Drew, did you want to introduce Sorry. our other students? Who are uh, here? Not yet, unless they want to be. Do you want to be introduced? Just as my name. Okay. okay, that's all right. We have some other students here who are going to be testifying later, and there's, uh, so you all be delighted to come and hear from them. So please, anyone have some great question? John Stein, I see you. I see you. Yeah, I'm trying to be here. A couple of questions to start off with. Can someone elaborate? You, I think it was uh, Representative Hansen and talked about we have a lot of students at the risk of losing financial aid, and it was tied into the Trump administration and some. Um, whatever their current position is today on DACA. And uh, can I get you to elaborate on this? If they eliminate DACA or don't reinstate DACA or at the federal level, does that actually threaten uh, financial aid for the appropriate students across the nation? And would this bill say we will keep this stuff in place in Washington state, regardless of what the rest of the country does, like you're trying to do with net neutrality and it's a totally different issue. So the short answers are yes and yes. The longer answers are, there are students in Washington who are eligible for financial aid or resident student status for in-state tuition because of DACA. If DACA goes away, then those students will not be eligible anymore in the way that they were. What we want to do is just say, look, <laughs> we want to protect the students who are currently eligible, say, keep things the way they are, and make sure these students still get whatever financial aid benefits they're entitled to, no matter what the Trump administration does or doesn't do with DACA. And John, if I could also add Come in, Dave. that the, 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 the reason the bill is important as well and what we've been trying to do for some years before all of this stuff with the Trump administration was to allow our dreamers, um, even before DACA was in place, uh, they were not eligible for any of our other scholarship programs like the Opportunity Scholarship, right. College Bound, mm -hmm. Higher Education Loan Program, Opportunity Grants. The only thing they're eligible for really are state need grants, so we're actually opening these up. And, for example, like the Opportunity Scholarship Program, that's a competitive program. That's not, you don't automatically get it, but at least they will have the chance to apply. That's what's been held up ever since the DREAM Act. That's what the DREAM Act from three years ago, the state DREAM Act, didn't address. And that's what Drew's bill is doing, and that's also re responding to the DACA situation. Right, I agree. And in fairness, they can actually apply for the Opportunity Scholarship. They just can't renew it uh, right. under current law. But regardless. Uh, Good question. This is a world that's incredibly complicated, as you can tell, so I'm happy to just talk more offline about the kind of maze that you have to go through to see what's eligible and what's not. Drew, let me make... Hold on a second, Kevin. Let's hear it. Go ahead, John. Two somewhat technical questions, just to make sure I understand this correctly. The way I am reading your news release is essentially making DACA students are basically eligible to compete for everything that a uh, non-DACA student can apply for in the way of aid in Washington. And can I get someone to uh, elaborate on this item that says ex extend the standard established in uh, 2003 to allow undocumented students to pay in state tuition? My question on that is, has that expired and you have to renew it? Or no, or yeah. Is it due to expire? Or? That does not expire. So back up. Long time ago, we made a bipartisan commitment to say, even if you are undocumented, if you live in Washington State, you complete your full senior year at a Washington State high school, you get a diploma. You've lived in Washington State for at least three years before you got your diploma. You still live in Washington State after, you apply to a Washington State school, provide them with an affidavit saying 
you'll file an application to become a permanent resident at the earliest possible opportunity. If you jump through all these hoops, you get in-state tuition. Okay, that's, a, that's something we put in place on a bipartisan basis many, many, many years ago. That does not expire. That is the so-called 1079 status, okay? So what we do, one of the things we do with this bill is say, if you jump through all these hoops, you are also eligible for the College Bound Scholarship, if that makes sense. Okay, and there's, a, there's other things we do, but that answers the question you just asked. Good? There you go. Uh, anyone else have any burning questions? Someone, I felt like someone else did, but maybe I just missed it. Okay, we are actually at 120, which is well, 118, which is when I was told we had to vacate the room so they can set up for committee. Again, we'll be hearing the bill at 130. We'd love to see as many of you there as care. And, and Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. in the Senate. Exciting things always happen at 8 a.m. in the Senate. Uh, there we are. Thank you very much. Take care. Have a good day. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Great job. Thank you.